Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how my wife and I transformed this closet for $7.88. I transformed the existing closet doors into some built-in customizable shelving and a removable shoe rack. The only thing I actually purchased for this project was this edge banding for, you guessed it, $7.88. Let's get started. This is the closet in the guest bedroom of my house. And right now, my wife and I use it for storing, well, all kinds of crap. There's one rod for hangers with a single shelf above it and a few random hooks along the walls. The closet definitely needs more shelving and spaces to store things in a more organized way as we can barely shut the doors because of all the stuff piled up on the floor trying to overflow out. There are two sliding doors which frankly I'm not a fan of. I personally like to be able to open both closet doors and see everything at once. Fortunately, it turns out these particular doors are made of really nice 3 quarter inch plywood, which means I should be able to salvage them for construction materials. After removing everything from the closet and doing some quick drywall patching and skim coating, I got to work on the doors. I removed the wheels and popped off this strip on the side so the door would sit flat on my table saw. I ended up using about one and a third doors to make the shelving unit and the other two thirds of a door to make the shoe rack. I designed the shelves and shoe rack to use up all of the door stock so I ended up with very little waste. I started by building the shelf. I ripped one of the doors in half on my table saw and since my shop is a little cramped I had to make some of the cross cuts with a circular saw using a level as a fence. I cut rabbits into the top and bottom pieces of the unit, and I cut a dado through the middle to hold one of the shelves. While I want the shelves to be adjustable, I decided at least one shelf should be glued in place to improve the structural stability of the unit. Eventually, the clothing rod will be attached to the side of the shelves, so this middle shelf will help counteract some of the shear forces. To cut the dado for this middle shelf, I took several passes with my normal kerf saw blade, because it's definitely way faster than installing a dado blade stack for just one shelf. As you can tell, I got really um, excited about this perfect fit. I could tell that this was going to go a long way towards erecting a really stiff shelf. The old paint on the closet doors was oil-based, and I am about to apply latex-based paint on them, so I sanded the hell out of them before priming and painting. Painting the shelves at this point actually ended up causing a problem down the road, which I'll get to in a minute. Next, I measured out some evenly spaced locations on a scrap of wood I had lying around, and I marked where the shelf pin holes will go. Using the same scrap of wood to mark the holes on both sides of the unit helps ensure that the shelves will all end up perfectly level from front to back and from right to left. I used my drill press to make a drilling jig, which is literally just a hole through a 2x4. The purpose of this is to make sure that the shelf pin holes are perpendicular to the shelf surface. In retrospect, I probably could have just eyeballed this and it would have been fine, uh, and probably a lot faster too. Remember that problem I mentioned a minute ago? Well, my perfectly fit dado joint for the middle shelf actually ended up being too tight because of the added thickness of the paint. So when I tried to glue up the unit, I really had to beat the devil out of it to get that joint to close. Eventually, I got all of the joints closed solid, but I did put a few dents in the side of the unit, which I had to patch up later with some wood filler. I applied some edge banding, which I actually had to pay for, with an iron to cover up some of the exposed plywood edges, both on the shelving structure as well as the detachable shelves. Then I applied a slight roundover on all the edges with a router.
Next, I turn my attention to the shoe rack. Overall, the process to build this is very similar to the shelving. It turns out that a shoe rack is basically just a shelving unit, but smaller. One difference is that the shoe rack has rounded feet, which I marked out with a compass and then cut out with a jigsaw. Another difference is that the sides of the shoe rack actually protrude up about a quarter of an inch above the top surface, which helps prevent shoes from falling off the sides. While sanding this piece, I learned that at one point, one of the past owners of my house had these closet doors painted turquoise. So, to each their own, I guess. My edge banding work wasn't quite as precise as I would have liked, so I used some wood filler on some of the gaps before priming and painting. In the end, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Next, I installed the shelving. I removed the baseboard with an oscillating tool and patched up the exposed drywall a bit, since it'll be visible through the back of the shelf before painting the interior of the closet. When installing the shelving, I had to shim up the bottom a bit to get the shelves to stand plumb, before securing them to the wall with some 3 inch screws into studs. Last up is fitting the clothing rod into the new space. I marked its new length and cut it with an angle grinder. To be honest, it would have been better to do this with a hacksaw, but it wouldn't be nearly as fun nor as dangerous. I installed the clothing rod with a laser level because I'm OCD about that kind of thing, and I found some old leftover shelf pins for the removable shelves. And voila! Closet transformation accomplished for $7.88. Just don't add in the cost of my workshop full of power tools. Or the new doors, which I actually ended up buying later. Oops. <laughs>